This is my 2012 Jeep Wrangler. It is the only vehicle I have ever in my life purchased new, and I love it. I'm talking right up there with my wife and kids kind of love, but it has an issue. Like most Jeep owners, I put a lift kit on it and some bigger tires. I went with 35 inch tall, 12 and a half inch wide tires and love the look, love the off-road ability, but there's a problem. The issue now is that the little V6 did fine with the stock tires, but now it's struggling getting the Jeep up to speed. So I want just a little bit more power. What I'm gonna do is add an intake and an exhaust, free up the airflow a little bit and see how that does. But first, before we do that, I don't want to simply depend on the old butt dyno to let us know if we're making more power or not. So instead, I'm going to go to my friend, we're going to put it on the chassis dyno and see what a baseline on my Jeep actually makes. Hang on, this is going to be fun. This is the Performance Automotive Shop in Monroe, North Carolina, and that is tuning guru Les Lesneski. We'd like to know if we can make more power on the Wrangler without a tune, and there's no way to know that without getting some baseline numbers first. It turns out that the Jeep has a speed limiter set at approximately 108 miles an hour. So we had to actually make the pull in third gear in order to get all the way to the RPM red line without hitting the program speed limit. So what did we find? The Pentastar V6 with these tires is capable of 228 and a half horsepower and 213 pound feet of torque. Not bad, but hopefully we can make it even better. I'll take any excuse to go for a ride when the top and doors are off. But anyhow, here's the plan. We're going to increase airflow into and out of the Jeep thanks to a new cold air intake from Flowmaster. It's their new Delta Force design. And then we're also going to help airflow out of the engine with a catback exhaust from Hooker Blackheart. All right, first things first, we just need to pull this engine cover. That was easy enough. So here is the Delta Force kit from Flowmaster. It's pretty comprehensive and only requires basic hand tools to install. Really like the reusable, cleanable air filter there. Can't wait to put it together and we're told it only takes about an hour to get it all installed. Let's see if it works. With the engine cover out of the way, we can start removing all of the stock intake from here to here. First thing we'll do is remove these 10 millimeter mounting bolts right here. Removing the stock air box is pretty straightforward. There is a temperature sensor that's hidden on the bottom of the tube, so make sure you get it unplugged before yanking everything out. After that, it's basically just a hose clamp at the throttle body and three grommets underneath the air box. Okay, so we've got our stock air box out, and if you can see, these are the grommets that we're holding the bottom in. The only thing that we need off of here is this sensor right here. So we're saving this little guy here, and the rest of this can go into file 13. See ya. Now you can see what we've left behind. Over here, underneath the airbox, you can see the grommets that were holding it in place. And it also looks like it's a good time for a little spring cleaning. Let me get that done and then we'll get right back to it. And now that all that's out of the way, we can begin assembling the Delta Force intake. This is the main box structure and this is the air filter mount that mounts to it just like this. Now what's really cool about this air filter mount is that it is profiled to help move air into the intake. Air hates to hit a flat surface like this. It doesn't move well, but this way, when it's in here, it comes through the filter, follows the profile, and helps get more air into the engine. The air temp sensor fits into a grommet on the new air pipe. A little motor oil helps it slide into place without ripping the o-ring so it maintains an airtight seal. The black barb fitting you see is for the crankcase vent hose to mount back up. Flexible silicone couplers connect the throttle body to the main tube and the main tube to the air box. 
The air box just drops right in place and is held in position by those three grommets we mentioned earlier. Finally, we're ready to install the filter along with the lid to the air box, re-secure the coolant overflow tube, and we're ready to go. All right, so let's test it and see how she works. Pretty nice. It doesn't whistle or make any extra noises like a more poorly designed airbox would. And it hasn't thrown a coat or anything yet. So I think I'm ready to move on to the next stage, which is the exhaust. The Jeep's exhaust system is dead simple with just a single pipe after the Y-pipes. This is the resonator and the chambered muffler is in the back just in front of the rear bumper. Before doing anything, I hit all the bolts with rust penetrant, except I discovered my aim isn't always so great, especially when trying to do it while looking through a camera screen. Then I loosened all the bolts and started pulling the stock exhaust, starting at the back and moving toward the front. couldn't show it because I thought I was about to smash a camera, but the rubber exhaust hangers can be pretty tough to get off, but I finally got them off using a couple of pry bars and a lot of spray lubricant. I pulled everything behind the Y-pipes. Jeep decided to make it all in just two pieces. The exhaust pipe running the length of the Jeep is really long, and to get it out, I had to drop the rear section of the skid plate, but after that, it finally came loose. Okay, that wasn't too bad. The stock exhaust comes out in two major chunks. So getting them out wasn't too bad. I had to uh, move a couple bolts off of the main skid plate, but after that it was a piece of cake. And here is the Hooker Blackheart exhaust that we're going to replace the old system with. Now this is really nice. It is high quality, 18 gauge stainless steel, so it's never gonna wind up rusting and looking like that. And it has a single flow through muffler instead of a segmented muffler. So it should help performance. We've got all we need to install it right here. And we do have two different hangers. This kit works for 2007 through 2016. So we have one for 2007 through 2011 and then 2012 through 2016. So let's get it bolted up and see how it works. So then I began reassembling everything in reverse order that I removed it keeping the stock exhaust hangers. And just like that, the new exhaust is installed. Super simple. The curve over the rear axle allows for plenty of axle articulation, and the new smaller muffler not only sounds great, but it also tucks up a little higher, helping improve departure angles a bit. And did I mention the sound? Honestly, it can be hard to make a V6 sound good. It's never going to sound like a V8, so just making it loud doesn't help. The sound levels with the Hooker Blackheart exhaust isn't loud. It actually sounds a note lower than the stock unit, and it just seems to give the Jeep more soul. For comparison's sake, here's the stock unit. Now, here's the Hooker Blackheart. Even over the wind noise, you can tell the difference. Before, there was really just nothing. But now the Jeep has a low rumble and it's 
really pleasing and not annoying at all. A great sound is good, but the point of all this is to make some power. So I took the Jeep back to Performance Automotive for Les Nesky to put my rig on his dyno again. And if you're wondering, yes, Les does wear a Hawaiian shirt practically every day, rain or shine. It's just part of his charm. Honestly, Les Nesky and I both wondered if the computer controlling the Jeep would even allow the extra air entering the engine to actually translate into power without having to crack into it for a recoil. But not only did we see results, the amount was actually surprising. This time around, the Jeep made 235.8 horsepower and 221.6 pound-feet of torque. Those are increases of 7.3 horsepower and 8.3 pound-feet of torque. Even better, those improvements aren't just in the upper RPM range where the Jeep will never actually operate, but everywhere along the RPM band from 3200 RPM on up. Considering these are two of the easiest bolt-ons we've ever done, heck, I never even put the Jeep on jack stands, I think that's pretty impressive. Plus, the Jeep just sounds better and is definitely more fun to drive both on and off-road. Hey, thanks for watching.